SaaS businesses come in all different shapes and sizes. Some SaaS companies are aiming to become platforms for massive companies. On the other hand, you have SaaS companies that are just tools for very specific users and run very lean. There's no right or wrong answer. SaaS ideas, SaaS opportunities are abundant. Here's a big question though. If you wanted to be a solo founder and you wanted to build one of these lean SaaS companies, how do you go about it? What are some great ideas in this space? And how do you actually accelerate that path to product market fit? In this episode, I'm gonna walk you through my key principles on building one of these companies. And I'm gonna give you five key ideas that I developed here at the secret location where I'm at a conference, meeting incredible people. So you can actually either be inspired by one of these ideas or you can apply the principles to develop your own idea and build your own SaaS business as a solo founder. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches and sometimes from Whistler, British Columbia on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon that so you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK Energy. Now, if you're already part of this community, if you're part of this channel, part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching programs, my people, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you over here. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll notice that I'm in a slightly different spot. I'm actually at Whistler, British Columbia. I'm at this secret conference where we're talking about macroeconomic trends. There are some incredible people here. A couple cool things about this. One, there are little to no tech people here. It's people from all different industries. It's business owners, it's entrepreneurs. And it's also about eight billionaires that are meeting with us and telling us about the macroeconomic trends that are happening so that we can actually prepare for what's ahead. It's an incredible conference. The good news about this is because there's no tech people, I'm spending a lot of time with real business owners and in real industries. We're talking about things like tech and AI and where the economy is going and all the shifts that are happening. So having talked to a number of these people, it was abundant to see all these incredible SaaS ideas that could be created based on the domain knowledge these people have in their space. So in this episode, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna walk you through my core principles on building one of these lean SaaS businesses. We call them micro SaaS businesses that you can build as a solo founder. But just to bring it home, I'm gonna give you five key ideas that came up organically as I've been meeting incredible people at this conference. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm Algorithm. It just loves it when you do that. Let's dig right into it. So my last SaaS company, I started as a solo founder and I started, believe it or not, as a micro SaaS business. Micro SaaS business is a specific tool being used for specific people and you just want to run it lean. Now, interestingly enough, micro SaaS companies can graduate to full SaaS companies and that's what happened to me. I started as a micro SaaS business and I ended up raising money from Andreessen Horowitz. We ended up scaling the company. We had over 100,000 users and then we exited it. Just because you start as micro SaaS doesn't mean that you can't graduate to big boy SaaS either. You can also stay as micro SaaS. That's the cool part about it. Now, having gone through that journey, there's some key principles that you have to follow to make one of these micro SaaS lean businesses work. They essentially include some key components. Number one, you wanna charge at least $30 a month. I'm a big believer that if you're solving a business problem, they should be willing to pay at least a dollar a day for that daily use, which means about $30 a month. And so that's my baseline. Bunch of good things come out of this. If you can charge $30 a month, it means that you actually get enough per user and you can actually spend that on ads down the line. You can actually drive to profitability versus a $9 a month product where the economics never work out. You never have enough money to spend from the users that are coming in to actually grow the user base. So I always start at $30 a month. And it also kind of forces me to make sure that I'm solving an important and urgent problem for these people. So they'll actually pay $30 a month because if they're not gonna pay $30 a month, it's not important, urgent enough of a problem. The second thing I always look for is I always try to build products that have a single player mode. It means that for these useful tools. I want them in the product. I want them using it. I want them swiping the credit card, which means that they should get value from it without having to convince anyone else to use it. That's what I call single player mode. So they should be able to get into the product and get value from it very quickly. And I will always want to architect the products and engineer the products so that they have that versus having to convince IT or their coworkers or getting permission from their boss. So that's super important as well. And then I always offer some sort of a free trial. I never want to have a freemium offering because then it just confuses in the early stage on whether I'm providing real value. So I always want to start off with, look, it's $30 a month. I'll give you a free trial. It's super easy to get started. And it's single player mode, meaning you get value right away. That's my bare minimum for these products that I go put into the market. 
And the last piece that I do that just simplifies everything is I, I always go for a specific customer. Even if I think a lot of different people can use it, I try to focus on a specific type of customer that can actually get value for it. That way I can market to them and be specific to them. So for example, with my last company, ToutApp, I just hyper-focused on salespeople because that's where we got the most movement and it was $30 a month and you could just do a trial and get into it. Over time, we started going after full sales teams. At the upwards, it was like $299 a month we were doing enterprise deals. We just started with these basic principles, which you can too. Okay, so with those principles out of the way, let's actually see how we apply this to real concrete ideas. As I mentioned, I'm at the secret conference. I met incredible business owners and entrepreneurs, and also a bunch of really smart people that are talking about where the economy is going. So we were in this mindset of talking about what is happening in these industries that these folks are in, where are things going, and how do we actually apply things like AI and software? In a way, a lot of my conversations were around, hey, if I give you a magic wand and you could just build the software of your dreams for your business, what would you build? That's kind of where these conversations and these ideas came from, which is why I think they're really interesting. My hope for you is that one of these ideas are interesting to you and you'll just run with it, or it'll inspire you to apply this framework and also develop your own idea. Either way, it should be win-win. So the first idea that came up, again, remember, we always want to target specific users. So this, these ideas came up as I was talking to specific people from specific industries, and we were talking about specific problems and opportunities that they have. The first one came up while I was checking in was a psychologist. And when I was talking to psychologists, and we were talking about software, and we were talking about AI, and the dream thing that they could build, what she mentioned was like, look, I have a lot of client notes. I write down a lot of client notes. And one of my things that I have to do is kind of piece together the progression of a client's journey. So you have this raw input of notes. And what we found was it would be really interesting, especially now with AI. AI and the way it can consume data is if you could take all those notes and you can actually start to figure out the patterns that exist on behalf of the psychologist. So the psychologist is in it, they're trying to understand the different patterns and apply the training, but a large language model could consume all those notes and start to understand the progression of the notes and what's happening with specific clients or across the client base. Now, obviously, there's some nuances here. There may be some privacy things, there may be some API things, but the broad idea of taking these notes that are being created and using software to analyze them, there's something very powerful there. And it follows these key principles of you could charge $30 a month, there is a single player mode, and it is for a specific user base. So this was really, really powerful. This is kind of how I got the idea for this video. I knew I needed to film it, and we never miss a beat even when I'm traveling. But I'm like, oh, this is cool. I can develop some of these ideas from these natural conversations I'm having with people out in the field. So that's how this first one came about. The second one, I met a bunch of people that run transportation and logistics companies. And so if you are focusing on transportation and logistics companies, these are people that are running companies that have buses or trucks and they need to actually figure out how to schedule these and coordinate these and move things around you start to think about those, then you can actually start to think about, well, these companies are actually all run very differently. They're regional companies. They all have their own ways of running their businesses. They all have unique use cases, but they also run on either very old software, aging software, or just seriously, just paper. So when you start to get into scheduling and logistics and starting to understand their business and their metrics, there are lots of opportunities for building a single user tool for these end users to help them run their business more effectively. Now, this is one of those cases where they are, in a lot of cases, running on paper and you can transform them to digital and you can solve specific problems that they have. And you can solve specific problems, so therefore you can start as a micro SaaS tool, but also there's really opportunities here for this micro SaaS idea to grow into a large platform over time as well if you wanted to. But very clear for this specific space in terms of transportation and logistics, there's just a ton of opportunity out there for moving people from old stodgy systems and paper to actually digital ways of actually managing their business. So that's the second idea. The third one came up when I met some people that were a little bit more on finance. So I met a couple of accountants and we were talking about how their business runs. And you know, one of the running themes in this conference is, hey, how do you think tech and AI, particularly this AI wave, is going to impact how you do business? And so that was a really great way to engage in conversations, just start to understand what are their problems and what are their opportunities? And if they had a magic wand, what would they solve? And by the way, if you are a solo founder, we're honing in on your idea. This is a great way to really hone in on your idea. Go to a conference where just normal business people are hanging out and go deeper into understanding their problems and engaging with them because they 
can't code, they can't build, however they're living in it. So if you gave them a magic wand and say, hey, what software would you build? They would tell you all kinds of really interesting ideas on what they really want to exist in their world. So with these accountants, one of the big things that started coming up is their system of record is QuickBooks. QuickBooks is what they live in. That's where all the data goes in. That's where the transactions take place. They classify things, the PNL is there. The, the depreciation is there. All these things are tracked in QuickBooks. Now, one of the things that's underutilized out there is the QuickBooks API. When you actually hook into the QuickBooks API, just like kind of the Salesforce API or the HubSpot API, you get full access to a business's data. And more for some reason, there are so many MarTech and sales tech products being built that hook onto the CRM APIs. There aren't a lot hooking into the QuickBooks APIs. And one of the biggest things that accountants need help with, particularly with AI and with analytics, is actually looking at all of that data and drawing out insights. That's one of the biggest ways they add value to clients beyond just the bookkeeping and the taxes. Getting strategic about what's moving in their business, what are the opportunities, how do they manage their money better? And so one of the key opportunities that came up is if you hook into the QuickBooks API and you actually start to apply AI and even just basic data analysis, you can start to deliver a number of insights and predictions to these accountants that they can then take to their clients. This is one of the core ideas that kept coming up. You have end users and you have service providers providing business services. These service providers and business services like accountants, lawyers, anyone that's in the middle are actually huge target users for SaaS companies. If you can actually go to them and give them a piece of software or an AI enabled software that helps them serve their clients better so they don't completely get disrupted by AI, they're gonna buy from you gives them an, an, an advantage. And that's super powerful because I think that before SaaS can just eliminate these business services and just go to the end users and say, hey, look, we'll just automate this, just buy this robot. There's a huge wave of enabling these business service people to actually deliver their services better using software and using AI. So that's my third idea, target accountants, hook into the QuickBooks API and deliver proper insights and use AI to actually do predictions. There are lots of really interesting ideas that you can solve for. So these accountants can serve their clients in a better way. Okay, those were the first three, and I will recap in the end and go through the principles. There's number four and number five, but before I go into that, let me just pause here for a second. We're starting to see the power in this. There's two things that really excite me about this. One, I think that we are entering a really exciting phase for SaaS. You have AI coming together, but also there's so much of the world that still runs on old software or paper, and we really haven't completed what we would call their digital transformation yet. And so in a lot of ways, there's more opportunities than ever before in SaaS, particularly as you go after specific users in specific industries. And that's where this model really shines. And when you have these kind of specific use cases, you don't need to build massive SaaS companies. A solo founder could operate this company with a core team of three to four people as they scale. And you maybe never need to go beyond that. They could be wildly profitable and then you can exit that for a really great multiple to a larger company. So there's so many incredible opportunities that open up. The second thing that's really cool is because there's AI, even if there is gen one software in these industries, you can actually create the next generation of software or software that overlays the old school software with AI. And that creates a huge, value proposition to these users as well. So many things are really coming together, which is exciting for folks like us that are building software companies of all different sizes. The beauty of this model, this, this micro SaaS model, is you can start small, you can be a tool, and then if your customers keep demanding more from you, you can always graduate to a massive software company. Or even more powerful, your software company can be exited to a massive software company because they need to add that capability. Either way, it's win-win for you as a solo founder. Now, if you're also in this stage and you're like really developing your idea and you really want to stress test it, I have a resource for you that you can download. You don't have to go anywhere right now. I'll tell you about it at the end of this episode. I'll link to it below. It's my 10 point SaaS business checklist. It's 10 questions I always ask before really writing code it's so that you don't waste eight months building the wrong product. And also, if you're watching this, chances are you are getting value from this if you're still watching. So please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just loves you when you do that. And so do we. We put a lot of love and effort in these videos. Even when I'm on the road, I never miss a beat, A, because I love doing this, and B, we really want to help as many SaaS founders build incredible companies as possible. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, idea number four. So idea number four, I met a bunch of lawyers. Uh, they run law firms, there's solo law firms. And one of the interesting things that I found is beyond law, like there's a lot of interesting SaaS companies building stuff for lawyers. But 
there's two parts to being a lawyer. One part is actually doing the law. So got it. And there's lots of AI companies that are heavily funded. They're doing really interesting things in that. But if you take a step back, there's this other part that is not getting as much attention. The other part of running a law firm is the relationships. Building client relationships and making sure clients stay with you and making sure that you're there for your clients at the right time, making sure that you get referrals from clients. There's, there's this entire business side of law. What I found is lawyers are hugely underserved when it comes to this. So one of the ideas that came up is sort of a CRM 2.0 for lawyers. Thinking about lawyers, they need to manage relationships in a unique way. There's different trigger events for their clients. And so the reimagining CRM specifically for lawyers and specifically for managing the relationships based on all the data that exists in their business can be an incredibly powerful SaaS idea. And also for a very specific audience, lawyers and maybe smaller law firms. So that was my idea number four that came up as I was talking to folks. And I think there's something really here. And I chose lawyers and that's how I kind of get, came up with this idea. However, this could be applied to any number of other roles as well, where you can go super niche and build the CRM 2.0 or the relationships 2.0. I think that's going to be a huge theme for SaaS in multiple industries. And then finally, number five, which is kind of one of my most favorite ideas, which is why I left it towards the end. And I think there's massive, massive opportunity here. And you can take this in so many different ways. I met a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners, just like me. So for these folks, entrepreneurs, one of the biggest things that they have been working on, they've been struggling on working in the business versus on the business. Uh, and you'll experience this as a founder. There's always this pull between do I write code and create a feature and do sales and marketing? Or do I think about fundraising or where this company is going and what my exit strategy is and how things are working. There's in and on. And there's always this constant battle. Do I just do the feature or respond to that customer? Or do I go look at the spreadsheets and really look at the broader view of where the business is going and what the data is telling me and how to, how to move it forward? And that's one of the tough things that exists for every entrepreneur, every founder. And that's actually an opportunity. One of the things that came up is, you know, we have a lot of data. As founders, you'll have a lot of data. A lot of these entrepreneurs are running profitable companies in different industries, in different verticals, and they have profitable companies and they have data and they have significant revenues and customers, but they don't always have the time to take a step back and look at the business. This is where there's a huge opportunity. So one of the things that came up is it would be cool if there was a business health checklist. If you could hook into as many data sources on this entrepreneur's business, maybe you compound some of this, you look at their CRM, you look at their QuickBooks, you look at their Stripe data. And based on that, you came out with a business health checklist where for them, you constantly monitor the core macro metrics for their business. That could be really powerful. And you can almost imagine the website, right? It's like, hey, entrepreneurs, are you working in the business or on the business? We'll analyze all your systems and we'll send you a predictive report every single week on the key business health metrics. And that'll allow you to figure out where you need to focus. Like 30 bucks a month, I would buy that. I would try that out. That was my idea number five for entrepreneurs, help them work on the business versus in the business and create a business health checklist based on all the data that you can tap into for their business across all the systems where they have it all spread out. Okay, so let's recap. So the core principle for building these lean SaaS companies, especially as a solo founder, we call these micro SaaS businesses, is you wanna make sure you're charging at least $30 a month. You wanna make sure that you use a single player mode. You wanna make sure that they get a free trial and it's for a very specific type of customer. This helps you stay disciplined and focused and helps you actually go super niche and essentially get to revenues faster. That's what I would recommend. Based on that, here are some key ideas that came up while I've been at this incredible secret conference. Number one, psychologists analyze their notes, figure out the patterns. And again, you can abstract this out to analyzing notes and deciphering patterns for any type of profession, but you should always pick one and go deep in it. That way you're not kind of neither here nor there. Number two, look at transportation companies logist and look at their logistics and their scheduling. So many opportunities because they're still running on paper in so many cases. Number three, accountants. Accountants have a lot of data in QuickBooks. QuickBooks has an API. So tapping into that and creating insights and patterns and reports that they can use to serve their clients better super powerful. Number four, lawyers. Lawyers, lots of software for lawyers to do the law, but not a lot to manage their relationships, which is 50% of the business. So think about CRM 2.0 for lawyers, how to manage their relationships based on all the data that's coming from the law side of the business. And you can abstract this out as well to other verticals as well, if you don't like lawyers. And finally, entrepreneurs, they always struggle with working in the business versus on the business. So look at tapping into all the data and creating a business health checklist that they can actually tap into opt into and say, cool, here's my checklist. I'm going to get it every week. It's going to help me figure out what I'm missing, what the blind spots are. And that way I can work on the business with the help of AI.
super powerful. So those are the core principles and the five core ideas that I wanted to share with you today. I can't stress this to you. You know, my entire week has been focused on thinking about macroeconomic trends. There were eight billionaires here, incredible speakers, 24 speakers, eight billionaires, and they taught us about all their views of where the world is going, what the trends are, and what's going to happen with the economy. So it was incredible. It helped me really zoom out. And while there are a lot of crazy things happening, there's so much opportunity, particularly with AI, particularly with technology. And that's our world. That's what we're here for. We had this opportunity to build incredible software companies and to serve incredible businesses and verticals. And the amazing thing is even for a simple micro SaaS idea, you're like, oh, it's just a micro SaaS idea. It's not a massive platform. There's still 100,000 people that will be in your target audience or a million people or hundreds of millions of people. Like who knows, depending on the vertical that you choose. And they can just use your software and pay $30 a month and it doesn't cost you anymore to deliver that software. Software is an incredible business model. The opportunity is so incredible. And it's wild that we can build these software companies. We can build them as, as a solo founder. I'm an engineer as well. I, I'm a solo founder. One of my software companies right now, I, I have a co-founder that I've worked with over 10 years. And so it's cool to have a co-founder. But prior to that, I've always been a solo founder. But now you have AI helping you write the code. You can launch the code. You have AI helping you do the sales and marketing on it. And you're also embedding AI into your product to help your customers. So it's an incredible time. There's so many incredible opportunities. But one of the things that's super interesting is the principles are the same. These principles of $30 a month, single player mode, free trial, and specific user and customer. Start there, get your threshold and expand from there. It's still true, even from my last SaaS company. It's an incredible time. And I think that you're gonna get so much upside when you build one of these kind of businesses. So there's no better industry to be in than software right now. And so I'm really excited for this community and this channel and everyone that's building incredible software companies. So now you know my framework, you have my five ideas. You are hopefully getting jazzed up. I'm like, cool, I really wanna build one of these ideas or an idea I just came up with. One of the things I recommend is you go through 10 questions to really stress test your idea before you waste eight months building it. So this is why I created my 10 point SaaS business checklist. It's completely free. Just go to tkkater.com slash SaaS dash checklist. tkkater.com slash SaaS dash checklist and you can grab your copy. It's 10 questions that I encourage you to go through before you write a line of code to make sure that you're building the right company and you can have a plan of action to stress test it. And what this does is it shortens the amount of time it takes to get to product market fit and revenues. I use this checklist to launch two SaaS companies in the last 12 months, yeah, 12 months. And we took both of them to product market fit and revenues and now they're applying the principles that I teach in my go-to-market program to scale. It's an incredibly powerful checklist and I encourage you to spend even an hour to really flesh out. And also, if you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just loves it when you do that. So do we, we put a lot of love into these videos. I drop an episode like this every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches, literally and figuratively speaking, on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon and you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode. If you have a fellow founder, if you have a team member, if you have a buddy that you wanna start a company with, if you're part of a Slack group, a WhatsApp group, or a community of other SaaS founders, please share this video with them. I wanna serve as many SaaS founders as possible to build incredible SaaS companies. That's my mission here and unstoppable. And it would mean the world to us. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business when you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I'll see you in the next episode. Grab a copy of that 10 point SaaS business checklist. I'll see you in there. Take care, everybody. Secret location, let's go.